Boom. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the Mortgage Coach Friday Mastermind. Every Friday, we are we're, it's a mastermind. It's not even an interview. We're just masterminding with leaders in the industry uh, to get ideas to help everybody grow and be more successful as a mortgage professional. If you're tuned into this and you're in our, our Facebook community, you can ask questions and comments. Or if we say something that you really like, you can always say something nice about it. And if you are watching this live in Zoom, you can comment down below. And if you're watching the recording, we'd love to keep that conversation going. So uh, wingman Todd Bookspan, what's up, dude? Hey, not much. I am super excited to uh, be here with our special guests. You know, we're all, uh, you know, I guess we could have that cliche joke that we're all seeing double this morning, but it's not exactly double. So that's, that's good. And a belated happy birthday to the two of you. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Well, I, I actually got to say happy birthday to, to, to Deborah live on Clubhouse. That was pretty cool. Yeah. The whole experience was recorded. That was cool. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh. Denise, how did you like your crumble cookies? Amazing. I didn't even, Deborah was telling me all about how they have an app and they compete with a company around here called Tip Treat. So it was amazing. I mean, I think after that day, I gained 10 pounds. So now we're, <laughs> now we're trying to get the other direction, but it was awesome. Thank you. Good. Well, thanks for making time to bring your ideas and your success to, to this call. I think the last time I had you two on was the time we were kind of introducing Deborah to the mortgage coach community over a year ago. Is that about right? It was Halloween because Denise was wearing a Halloween shirt. Wow. So it's like almost a year. I mean, 11 yeah. months. Uh, well, Deborah, you are a massive gift to the mortgage coach community. Thank you for all the time you put into jumping on stage and just giving great ideas and holding people accountable. So appreciate that. So I know the big topic at hand is just how to win with social media in multiple audiences. And I think this was your idea. I don't know, Deborah, if it was your idea or Denise, which one of you said, hey, let's, let's brainstorm about that today. Well, we were actually thinking, you know, every quarter we get together and we look at what's working, what's not. Why has this year been so much more successful than the last year? And, you know, the pivoting that we've had to do. And so when we really started looking at it as a whole, it's like you have to be communicating in multiple channels. You have to be doing multiple things. And I think that's what's the hard part is everybody wants just that magic pill or that magic bullet to be able to say, okay, this is all I have to do in order to be successful or do, you know, two more loans a month or whatnot. And sometimes it's not as black and white as that. Sometimes it really is an onion and you have to start doing maybe two or three things together. I think when we were talking, we were calling it the peanut butter and jelly sandwich. It's like the sandwich makes up, there's three different components to the sandwich. And then we had an argument on, is it creamy peanut butter or crunchy, which is a whole nother debate. But <laughs> the point is that sometimes it's more than just, you know, one thing, it's a culmination of things. And I think that's really important to get out to loan officers is that it, it's not just one magic bullet. Right. There's, there's no doubt. And it's a multi-channel. What, what are, well, first of all, before we get into the bullets and the strategies you have, give us an update on your team's performance. You know, what kind of production are you doing? Uh, how many loans have you closed? Uh, let's just find out where you're at right now and how it compares to last year. So last year we closed 604 for 196 million just my production. Um, and this year we are at 501 families for right at one, it's just shy of 151 million. And where do you think you're gonna end up the year? Like what's the, the target? We'll probably end at 215. Wow, and how many families? That'll be likely 675. Wow, so you're, you're having a spectacular year despite the fact that we lost a trillion dollars in refis, you're, you're still up. And what do you, what do you credit your success to this year? It's the peanut butter and jelly sandwich. So when COVID hit, one of the first things that I did was get in my office and record a bunch of videos and not like, not social media videos, but I interviewed and it was one day and I brought multiple outfits but I brought in a financial advisor, I brought in a CPA, I brought in an appraiser and an inspector. 
Um, and then I brought in a, a landlord because at that time it was the start of 2020. You know, there were a lot of a lot of these first time home buyers and these millennials, man, they think so much differently than even my generation and older. The way that they view real estate and what they're starting to do with real estate is a lot different than what we did. You know, they're not as traditional as we are. They're thinking of ways like okay, if I own a home, I know that it's better than renting, but what if I VRBO or rent a couple of rooms out? And that's why I really wanted to interview a, a local landlord around the area that had owned, I think she owns, she's younger, she's about 37 and she owns like eight rental properties. Wasn't inherited any of them, didn't inherit a bunch of money, just was an average Joe person that got into banking and start, you know, accumulated one by one. And so I had an arsenal of content and that's what I started pushing out information on social media. I know people know that I'm on social media, but my content has started changing ever since about last year. It's not just the lifestyle photos that are posted anymore. It's a lot more of, you know, my TCA strategies. It's a lot more of hear from a credit expert, which creates that third party validation. So if you don't believe me that, you know, a Vantage score is different than a VICO score, well then let, let me let you hear it from my credit expert. And now it's not just me saying it, it's him saying it. And so that was the start of what I had learned of, okay, I've got to change it up a bit of not just having those lifestyle photos, which is a lot of what the real estate community started doing. For the men on here, if you don't know what lifestyle photos are, those are like the stage photos with the coffee cup and you're at the kitchen or, you know, where the girl's hair is like on point, makeup on point, and you just woke up looking fabulous, checking your email. Those are not real photos. Those are professionally done. Um, there's no shame in them, but, but I just started realizing, okay, it's got to be more than just that kind of content. And then it's got to be more on more mediums. And I've talked a little bit about this, but I have, you know, obviously I have my organic Facebook and Instagram. I've got private realtor groups. So that's a medium that I touch on and there's different content that goes in there. But then my CRM this year is really where I kicked it up a notch where once a month I would send something to real estate agents. And I, sometimes I felt like I was being a little bit annoying or it was just, it wasn't an apple pie recipe, but I would say the content wasn't as nerdy as how I'd like it. And that's where, where I really started sharing this year, my TCA strategies and for lack of better words, dumbing it down to a degree with the appraisal gap strategy and the rent versus own and the cost of waiting and, and pairing that with great graphics, which is what Deborah does on my social media, because I don't necessarily take the same graphics that's in Mortgage Coach and put those on social media, because I think social media is more to the emotional EQ versus the logical. And so she takes something that's logical and makes it look pretty and makes it heartfelt and does all that. But with my CRM stuff to the realtors, they they were eating that alive. And that's really what I was missing as I started realizing, okay, there's logic, there's a logical component, which I'm more naturally good at. I'm not very emotional. <laughs> Deborah's way more soft and emotional and thoughtful. And, you know, so she's the good twin. I'm the bad twin. And no. let's just get it out there. But when I paired the two together, I was like, okay, this is what I was missing as I was pretty much only being logical and not really connecting too much from an emotional standpoint. Hire Deborah, she's helping me on social media, pair the logic with the emotion and just getting to the masses, the financial literacy, which is what I think, especially after a COVID year, is like what people are thirsting for. All right, so you mentioned different social channels. So you said private Facebook groups. So that's multiple. Do you mind defining that? And then what other social channels are you focusing on? Hey, hey Todd, real quick, before we go to tactics on that, because we're 10 minutes in, I just want to unpack at a high level real quick and then go to the tactical, how you're doing it. Uh, so community, I, want, I hope what you're hearing is she was going from, and when she says lifestyle, it was her, it was her team. It was, and if you've followed 
her like I have forever. Uh, it was it was like, hey, we're having fun being professionals and sprinkled some fiscal literacy concepts in. But what I'm hearing and also what I'm seeing is you're really building your entire social media presence to fiscal literacy. Now you're trying to make it fun and entertaining and on point. But like if you want to be a millionaire um, with real estate, follow Denise. If if you're a first time home buyer and you want to build wealth with real estate, follow Denise. Like you're you're becoming this. And I don't, I don't think the word fiscal literacy expert is is that marketing cool of term, but you're really building your entire show and all your different channels around making people smarter on money and becoming a millionaire with real estate. Is that accurate? Yeah. And it's even just like, you know, what's the difference between a revolving account and an installment? She doesn't necessarily fall into like the building wealth and becoming a millionaire, but it's fiscal, just like, but it's fiscal literacy 101. Yeah, it's just, it's just making people, you know, what's the difference between a Roth IRA and a traditional IRA? And, you know, how much does your employer contribute to a 401k or a 403b? And that has always been my heart and soul is, it's always been my heart and soul. And I would communicate that with my clients. I just didn't do a good enough job communicating it to the world. And that's really what I see social media is. I don't look at social media as a toy. I look at it as a tool for me to be able to get out to the public and to the masses. You know, the failures that quite frankly, our parents made that we just don't, I don't, I don't ever want to be in that position. And I would hate for anybody that I came across to get into that position because they just didn't know any better. So, so it would be fair to say that there's two buckets of content. Well, no, three buckets of content. Fiscal literacy one on one, one on one. Some of it's mortgage, some of it's not mortgage, but if it has to do with just being smarter around money and finances. And then one category is wealth building. So wealth building content. And then tier number three is just whatever. You know, like you're you still got a bucket of lifestyle things that you're doing. And well, you and, still have to be fair? relatable. Like no one mortgage is. Mortgage and finance and finance is not the sexiest topic on social media. Like people will tune in. It's funny because our company had a uh, coaching call yesterday and, you know, they're starting to do more videos online and some of them are getting disappointed because they don't have as many likes or as many comments. And I'm like, well, you can't just talk about mortgage or finance every day, all day, multiple times a day. I mean, you can, it's just, there's not a whole lot of social media is still an outlet for entertainment. Um, and so there is some component of my personal life. There are some aspects of my personal life I still keep private. Bill Hart taught me that. Um, I don't want everything out there about my marriage on there. I don't want my marriage to become, oh, look what we're doing this weekend and look what vacation. That's not what I want that to turn into. Um, but my kid is super marketable because he's almost four and does four-year-old stuff. And and that makes me relatable. So people want to still feel related to you. You know, some of my most popular posts are when I talk about cargo shorts or when I talk about, I've never actually outlived like a chapstick. Chapsticks just disappear or like, you know, like I've never actually used an entire chapstick. And those boring things like cargo shorts and Target and, ch and Chapstick, it's like those boring things are what still make you connected and relatable and you sprinkle in the financial stuff. And that's what keeps your page entertaining or, you know, someone not just to like it when they're trying to get a mortgage or trying to learn more, they will actually hit like or subscribe because there's a level of entertainment that comes with it. So I will still say that's the hard part probably in your business is if people just wanted professional, they would go to LinkedIn, but the Instagram and the Facebook, there's a level of feeling connected and relatable to the human that you're watching or listening. Love it. Well, and I always say, if, if you're going to compete against the robots and the robot lenders out there are going to spend way more money than you are each month, trying to run ads to get in front of your clients, that you've ha you have to be the human and keep the humanness in your business with realistic expectations that, you know, right now, every second, there's 1600 posts 
that you're competing with every second. So setting proper expectations of an organic social media strategy is very different than a paid strategy. And so that's where we're having the conversations of if you're getting caught up in those vanity metrics, like the likes and the follows, you're going to be disappointed with an organic strategy because Facebook and the algorithms, they take the 1600 posts each second and they're going to rank it. And they're going to say, based off your clients or your followers in their prehistoric behaviors, are they going to be more likely to engage, interact, comment with this mortgage post or with this post by Denise and her kid? And so the chances are most lenders, they don't have a lot of followers that are engaging with other lenders. And so most of the time, your content's not going to get seen until they're given your name and the Gen Zs and the millennials out there are research obsessed. So they're going to Google you and they're going to start going through your page. It doesn't mean they're going to like your stuff, but they are going to want to feel like they can trust you and that you're like them and that you're a human and that you have educational videos that at 2 a.m. when they're in their jammies, they want information right now because that's what they're used to. So there's a different strategy when it's organic and it's hard to quantify the decision that someone feels confident enough to contact you because on a lead form, when it says, how did you hear about us? It may say, it could say Todd Booksman, my real estate agent, but that wasn't what made the decision from a behavioral standpoint that made them contact you. Makes 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 sense. So let's get tactical. I do want to um, say one more thing, just from a strategic high level perspective, like from what Denise said, her call it the three buckets of her content are fiscal literacy, wealth building, and then just personal connection, things that help connect. Uh, I've been studying different loan officers that are going to be speakers in the Modern Mortgage Summit, and Shop Medocian specifically, uh, who's the number one loan officer in the country. Uh, kills it. Uh, pretty intentional on social media. And I've been studying him because I'm going to be doing another interview with him. And his his real three categories are local leadership. So like he does a lot in the local market. And it's like local leadership, donating money, helping people, bringing lunches, uh, a lot of realtor success. So like when, when, when I look at his his online profile in multiple channels, it's while it's bar, there's some borrower value, it's really like realtors, realtor marketing, and then personal. Like you just watch his social media, you're like, that dude's cool. You know, oh, that guy's got a cool family. You know, like he just, so, so I just want you to know, it's not to say what's right. I want you guys to, like, Denise is very clear. Me personally, my family, my husband, my kids, I'll share some stuff, but not a lot. Uh, and she's this, I just want everybody listening to this, get purposeful. And, and I want you to decide what are the three, not five things you're gonna communicate on social media, but what's number one, most important. Denise, it's clearly fiscal literacy, be a nerd, uh, but what's your number one? And then what are your three? What are your three areas of focus? So Todd, you had some tactical questions. What were they again? Oh, I, I apologize. Well First off, that was great coaching, right? You have to be intentional for you and pick what is what is best for you. And I would encourage you, if you're struggling to figure out what that is, reach out to Deborah. She's here today. So you can ask questions in uh, Facebook or here in chat, or just reach out to her at info at plug and play SM for social media. For those of you who can't figure that out, well, I shouldn't say that. That made me sound like a jerk. Plug and play SM, info at plug and play SM.com. And, uh, and I, you know, you guys all know it. She's helping us with the Modern Mortgage Summit uh, promotion. She does win by noon. So obviously a huge fan as well. Um, so we Todd, can, I, can I just pile on that one time real yeah, quick? Absolutely. So, I mean, Deborah does tactical, like she has clients where she does strategy and puts out their content. She has different levels of engagement because strategy is the single most important thing. You know, like if you're not clear on your strategy at the high level, um, you're, you could be busy, you could be doing posting, but it's not going to give you the goals you want. And then also just like adjusting your strategy can massively upgrade your results. So, uh, anyways, make sure you leverage, uh, Deborah, but what makes her special is she's really good at strategy and she's also really good at execution, which is usually pretty uncommon. Usually someone's really good at one or the other. 
No, that's great sharpening. And I just threw, someone just asked, I put uh, in the Zoom, I'll put it in Facebook in a minute, uh, Deborah's email address so that you guys can reach out. I would also encourage you to follow Modern Real Estate Summit um, on, on social as well as Win by Noon because she's also creating great content that's shareable um, for you to share with your real estate agents. There's just great info in there that you're gonna find. And we're seeing uh, more and more loan officers uh, use that to educate their agents and help build their own brand by leveraging ours. And it, guys, that reminds me of another thing. Like we made a very, well, we didn't. Deborah made a very intentional strategy with our modern real estate summit. I mean, the goal is make it valuable for realtors. And clearly the business goal is sell lots of tickets to the modern real estate summit. But the strategy is to just put content that if you're a real estate agent, you're going to be more successful. You're going to be smarter because you follow it. So it was all about education and empowerment um, for agents. And that was the strategy of the, the page. So anyways, good point, Todd. We should probably give a quick uh, Modern Mortgage Summit plug here as well. So just hit modernmortgagesummit.com to purchase your ticket. Uh, tickets are on sale and, and uh, faring well. And uh, Dave is crushing the uh, world. If you're a corporate leader and looking to get a corporate discount, reach out to Dave at mortgagecoach.com because uh, he's out there uh, selling up a storm. And so it's going to be a great event this year. I, I'm, uh, I'm super excited about it. So um, yeah, we're, we're in the first week and we crossed uh, 4,000 tickets sold yesterday. So uh, wow, we're, awesome. we're going to get to the 10 for sure. Yep. That's, our, that, our, that's the goal. The goal is to help you. So it's not about the number, but it's about helping you figure out how to up your game going forward. Can I add something to that? I was just going to say, Todd, go ahead. And then the modern real estate page is also great for lenders to follow because I always, I think a great lender knows how to solve their agents' problems. And so leverage that content, share it, screenshot, get the data because literally all we do is consume information from multiple different resources of Tom Ferry, Brian Buffini, all the different outlets so that you don't have to. And then we create those posts so that it provides value for you and you can provide value to your real estate partners. While also with Win by Noon, if you follow his content, if you're a leader, if you're a branch manager, if you're a parent, it's great content for just knowing how to structure your day, productivity hacks, self-management or time management. I mean, all of these resources are things that you could send out to your team, whether it's an email um, of just looking for gaps. Um, I can't remember when that one's going to be posted, if it wasn't today or yesterday, but a, a time management gap. And these are all things from win by noon that I just pull and take. That's going to help you be more effective and not just efficient, but it's, it's getting off that um, wheel of busy being busy and not going anywhere. <laughs> yeah. And just to give you guys a quick show of that, this is it. We'll put a link down below, but as you can see, just really quick hit value um, for agents, but equally as valuable for loan officers and actually more valuable for loan officers because not only do you get a little nugget of knowledge, but you have something that you can share um, with agents. So check it out. Uh, all right. So you had, a, you had a tactical question 10 minutes ago, Todd. Let's make sure we answer that. I don't want to be cut off Denise. Denise was trying to say something. So before we ask the tactical question, I want you to throw in what you wanted to throw in, Denise. Well, I just thought it was kind of cool. It's a success story of being part of this community. Um, I hope Shayla doesn't mind if I share it, but actually Sh Shayla messaged Deborah and then met and asked her, hey, I know your sister did a realtor round table and discussed a couple of my TCAs. And um, she, I think she had an appointment. Was it that day? Yeah. Okay. So that day she hadn't, she didn't yet have it prepared. So she, I was like, Hey, I'll send these to you. It's in word, full disclosure. It's my stuff. It's not Deborah's stuff. So it's not very fancy looking, but you could just remove my logo, add your logo and gave her three little word documents. And, um, it's just cool. Cause she was like, Hey, thank you so much. You totally saved my butt. It was an awesome meeting. And that's the power of being connected to this group. And even attending the modern mortgage summit is you get to learn from all these people and it's crazy. People will, I know if at any point, I mean, I've asked Dan Keller for stuff constantly, Jeremy <laughs> Forcier constantly, Wally all the time. It's like we're sharers because we have the same compassion and hearts of helping everyone get better, which is why we're doing this call right now. So 
you haven't signed up for it, you definitely should because you never know. You might need something and you can, you can contact one of the speakers or anybody that attended and someone's willing to help you. Yeah, well, that's one of the best things about this community, that's for sure. Well, guys, that's the best thing about any mastermind. Like what happens on a stage is valuable. This is a stage, what's happening. But guys, what happens afterwards? The conversations you have in the group and the conversations you have outside of the group and the friendships that you make is, is where, you know, this industry just becomes amazing and fun. So very, very cool. So, so Todd, what was the question you had? All right. Going back to my tactical question is you said you had multiple Facebook groups. So of course that set off the, the, the question mark in my head of who, what are those groups like and who are you targeting number one? And then number two, after that, as you said, just, you know, multiple channels. So I think, you know, it'd be great to hear you know, I know you are on Instagram and Facebook, so I follow you there, but I'm sure you're on other places that I'm not cool enough to be on. So I'd love to hear those. Too. <laughs> well, I've got two private Facebook groups and uh, one is for my real estate agents and one is for my nerd club alum. It's something that I started a few years ago when I realized that the algorithms with social media isn't great. The people that I wanted to get content in front of, you know, they'll, they'll filter that through but I wanted my clients and as loan officers, we have two clients. We have realtor clients and we have the end clients. Some of us have financial advisors and the divorce attorneys and all that. But the purpose of it was to create something that was exclusive to the people who are loyal to us, where you will get almost like nerd unfiltered. And that is where I will put a lot of the graphics and research that Devers company does I don't use a lot of those graphics on my normal public social media. I reserve that exclusively for those private groups. You can't get into them unless you've been a nerd club of mine, like I've done alone for you. And you can't get into my real estate group unless you're like loyal to us. And I actually look at that group and we fire and hire constantly because that it's an exclusive thing and everybody wants to feel like they're part of an exclusive thing. But the content that I put in there is stuff that she researches and creates probably a lot of the similar type feel of the win by noon stuff. And I put it in there without a logo specifically for my real estate agent so that they're learning, but I just want to help be a resource to them saying, Hey, you know, swipe and adapt. I subscribe to the bridge builders and all of that stuff and she'll make it look pretty. But if you're part of that group, then you get that content and it creates an environment where other agents are like, oh yeah, that's because I'm part of the private group. And, you know, it creates that competition. Well, how do I get in there? Well, not if you're referring three different lenders, I can tell you that. So there's a little bit of that, but it's private just for them. Um, my nerd club alum, I am a really big believer. I think I think honestly, the mortgage coach community is what embedded it into my brain that you have to treat the clients like gold. I mean, you can have the greatest marketing, but if you don't have the back end piece and you don't have the client experience, you constantly are going to be on that uh, hamster wheel and restarting every single month. And so, um, you know, from the start to finish, as far as when we pre a client, when a client goes under contract, we do all the the care packages, we do a closing gift. Um, if a if someone has a baby, we copy Ryan Grant, we send out a onesie that says future nerd. Every time someone posts it, they think I'm having another baby. I'm like, no, that's the bird. I only have one. Um, I don't have a litter. But um, but we do all those follow-up things. And you know, for most of my career, I was pushing my online reviews to Zillow really stinks because Zillow started a mortgage company. And so lately I've had to pivot, you know, people think maybe I don't have to pivot as much or, but I'm constantly pivoting all the time, you know, who would have thought? So now I've started my Google reviews. We have over 200 reviews right now, but you have to deliver such a good client experience that someone feels compelled enough to write a review. And then it doesn't just end of course, with um, when the deal closes, we have home bought, we do annual reviews. And so if my client experience is going to be that great and we build that great of a connection, I felt the need to have a private group where we post different pictures. And, you know, if someone says, Hey, do you, did, does anybody have a roofer? Then, you know, there's a hailstorm that came in and it's meant to be a group that is, you know, a close knit tribe, so to speak. So 
Um, I keep up with both of those as well. And I, I am the one that keeps up with those. I'm the one that does the posting in those. Um, my other social media outlets that are my public outlets, I 100% delegate that to Deborah's company. I still though personally post in those pages at least two or three times a week. I feel like that's a must. If otherwise you turn into a LinkedIn account, that's not what really people are there for. But in total, I have my private groups. I used to spend a lot of time on pot buys to my real estate agents. And this is a failure of mine that was timely and very expensive. I would go out and I would, you know, get, you know, when COVID hit, I bought a bunch of nerd hats and it was like to cover the COVID hair. And we would pop by all these different real estate agents. And, and it was like, we learned that we weren't deepening the connection with those people. We kind of got away from doing the realtor round tables, even prior to COVID and doing the pop buys because we thought it made them feel special. And, and I realized what's more meaningful to your realtor partners is that connection piece. And so now we make sure that every six to eight weeks we do some, we host some sort of mastermind or happy hour. I'm not really the happy hour lender. I don't drink. Um, I have a little kid, so I'm not the happy hour lender. No, no, does if you are, that's great. But I try to pair it with like, okay, let's do a mastermind. Let's get a group of realtors together. And I don't go for, I want to fill a room with a hundred. I go for the, I want to bring different real estate agents from different brokerages together to share strategies, much like what Dave does. Because sometimes when you work at the Keller Williams, all you get fed is Keller Williams stuff. But I have found if you get people together from different companies, you can share tips and tricks and, and you hear things that you don't hear within your own environment. And my real estate agents really like it. And I go all in on the breakfast. I don't go cheap. I hire someone. Last time we did these like really cute chicken and waffles and I go all in. Why do I go all in? Because it's grammable. I want them to have a good time, but it's also for the gram. Almost every agent will go in there and they love the setup that they post it. They tag about it, but I get to deepen that connection with them. I get kneecap to kneecap with them. And so my channels are, you have to still get kneecap to kneecap with your partners often to build that connection. You still have to, I personally still do email marketing to my real estate agent. So every single agent I come in contact with, they go into my CRM and every Friday they get an email from me that is super laser focused on content. Uh, last week's, it was about a, it was a trick within the contract, within the Texas contracts of how people can do an appraisal waiver um, without the Trek appraisal waiver form that's within the contract that I had seen other agents doing. Today, it's the difference between a cashier's check and a wire. Um, when your client goes to the closing table, you know how that could delay. If they do a wire, it can delay our table funding because the title company does. The point is, is it's short, sweet. It's something that is meaningful that could impact them. And usually once a month, it's a TCA strategy. So email marketing, roundtables, the social media content, the reels, the stories, the lives, the reviews. That's what I mean by the peanut butter and jelly sandwich. <laughs> wow. There is so much gold in those hills that you just laid out. So, so I want to make sure you guys caught a few things that I caught. And, and you wrote down something. So is your agent events grammable? I love, I love that. She's being very specific that when she's getting these agents together, she's making it grammable for her and she's making it grammable for them because they have, they have it. So there's a lot of intentionality in, in that. Super smart, super cool. I hope early on in the conversation, you heard the passion and the intention around exclusive content in her groups. Like everything Denise does is, I want it to be valuable for other people. I want them to be educated. Uh, when she's doing parties, it's not about being friends and drinking, which guys, no problem with that. And everybody has their own personality. But, but Denise, it's all about how do we get the right people in the room so we're all learning from each other? So how do we make it valuable? Uh, I, I've done a lot of interviews around how to do agent masterminds. And, and it's, 
game on guys. It's never been easier to recruit agents because there's lots of problems that need to be solved. And if you are a connector and you're a leader, you know, start doing agent masterminds now. And also everybody wants to reconnect. I mean, while we're not out of COVID, we, we can connect a lot more in person than we, we could. So those were a few things I wanted to make sure everybody got. Hey, Denise, and you, you don't need to answer this question, but you mind giving us a feel for how many agents are in your group and how many families are part of the new Nerd Club alumni? I have over 2,000 families in the private Nerd Club group. Um, and in my realtor group, I have 86 people. And usually those are exclusive. We do, you know, we try, I'd say at least three or more, depending on the agent and what their year was. Um, but every quarter I will go in there and then there's somewhere I'm trying to recruit them. And I'm like, you know, one of my top agents referred me to an agent that's been in the business for a couple of years. And she's like, oh, Denise, your team are great. You got to be part of her group. And, and by the way, the title of my group is like, this is exclusive. Like this is a invite um, don't be offended if you get off. It's just, I have to keep the integrity of the group. Um, and so sometimes I'll let newbies in that were, it's a new established relationship. I don't mind working with new agents. I actually kind of enjoy it because I get fulfillment of helping their business grow. If they'll work hard and they, you know, they don't complain after two months of it being hard. But so sometimes we let some newbies in, but there's 86 total in that real estate group. Right now it is only realtors. And right now my CRM is only for realtors. And I know that's not smart. Deborah is pushing me. I, I have adjusted my process on the front end where now on our, um, when someone goes online and fills out an application, we're specifically asking, do you have a CPA? If so, what's their name and email? And do you have a financial advisor? It's all part of the initial loan application so that we can capture that information. And then this year we're gonna go after them. I've been watching and listening, all these other people have success. And I think it would be a fun challenge that now we're gonna have a welcome email that goes out to them, try to have coffee with them. And then I would create basically that same kind of ecosystem specifically for them. Obviously the direct content for them would be different, uh, especially financial advisors. I jive well with financial advisors. One of, I've gotten 11 deals from one financial advisor just this year, just because a realtor referred me a client that happened to be a financial advisor. He thought I did a good job, was like, oh, you should come talk to my group. Like it wasn't intentional how it happened, but it just kind of happened. And it's not him that has referred me all those deals. It's the guy that he introduced me to. So I just thought, you know, why am I not doing that? It's time to do it. Um, so you could, whether you're, whether you work with a bunch of real estate agents or diverse attorneys or CPAs, or the point is, is it's, it, I do feel like it has to be a multi layered, let's just call it approach is it, it can't just be direct emailing. It can't just be Facebook marketing you're not, you're not building a true connection with that person. If there's not a breaking bread with that person, whether it's one-on-one -on -one or an agent mastermind type setting, you've got to, you've got to do multi approaches. So, so guys, we, we talk all the time about, you want to be a modern mortgage professional. You need to W A Z C D your business, do what Amazon and Zillow can't do. And, and so guys think about it. If you had uh, a very intentional, valuable Facebook group of agents, 86 agents, you're golden. If you had 2000 clients that were part of a, a Facebook group, and I know those people are also in uh, HomeBot, so they're getting HomeBot wealth management updates, they got a total cost analysis to make decisions, and you're connecting with them and leading them in Facebook. Like, do you think Denise cares that Zillow's in, more, in business? She may not give them her reviews anymore, but she's good to go. Like you got a 600, you know, a platform that can help six to 700 families a year. And I, you know, hearing your strategy, like you're, 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 this decade is going to be golden for you, in my opinion, because of what you're doing. So one question, and then Todd, I'll give you the next one. You know, I heard that you're going to be more intentional about going after CPAs and financial planners. And I, I always use this term, you know, be the captain of the wealth team. Like if you are the one 
in your local market that's connecting CPAs, realtors, real, um, anybody that helps a family build wealth. If you're the leader and the connector, you're like the captain of the wealth team. So what are you going to start a different group and call it like, you know, wealth club, the nerd wealth club or something, or are you going to start inserting that content in that community within your realtor group? You know, I don't, I actually don't know yet. I've been thinking over this, this fall, some of the videos I created, I have the watermark building wealth with the financial advisor and the CPA. Um, I need to, build a deeper relationship with the groups to figure out if they jive well with the agents. There's a level of, I want to remain the quarterback so that when they've got a client that's looking to shop or need, need a real estate agent that I can refer that agent out. So I don't know yet. I don't have that part of the piece together predominantly because, you know, real estate agents are different. They're different birds. <laughs> they are, they're different than your yeah, animal. No, pool. You're I agree. Yeah, no. And if you tried to, you know, make a group that's valuable for CPAs and financial planners, also valuable for realtors, probably not. Uh, And if you're going to be valuable and connect with agents, that's one thing. And then there is a wealth club. Yeah. And there are some agents that want to be in the wealth club. Um, You know, so the wealth club agents, but some most agents won't want to be in the wealth club or they won't put the time into it. And I, I've seen in the chat, a couple of people ask, is HomeBot worth it? For the record, Dave's been talking about HomeBot for a couple of years now. I just started with HomeBot. Dave, I don't know if you know this, like March of this year, our company, so I think you told me about it. I told it to our company. Our company signed up for an enterprise account. I just started using it in March, hands down. Now, I still do my annual asset reviews. I have a reminder in my CRM. It goes out. Hey, let's look at your total cost analysis. Where are we at? But I wish I would have listened to you years ago. I have more clients email me about HomeBot. I'm surprised. It's great. So who I think it was Julie who asked the question, hands down, it's worth the investment. I wish I would have done it when Dave first told me about it. I love that. You, and I hope you've got the integration turned on. The I more do. You coach, okay, good, 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 I, good. On HomeBot too, I just threw uh, two things. I threw the discount code WBN Lender into both Zoom chat and into Facebook. And then also I'm doing a webinar uh, in a week and a half on HomeBot. It's just gonna be really how to create client engagement with HomeBot. I've done a version of it before, but this will be an updated version the, the post, well, I shouldn't say post, the, the uh, hopefully post COVID version of how to use HomeBot to create engagement because it's been awesome for my team. Uh, my team had a gap. They didn't have a year's worth of people they forgot to add to HomeBot and it, uh, just adding that on there. Um, I think got four or five refis in the past two weeks as since they put the new people in there without any other activity. Those were people who got it and proactively reached out to the team saying, oh, looks like I can refi. And, uh, and then there's, you know, tons of more people who've engaged with the, you know, with HomeBot itself that will um, hopefully be, should be getting followed up with by the team uh, all, this week already if they haven't or next week. So um, absolutely. But I'll, uh, I'll walk you guys through um, really how um, I've seen my team and others use HomeBot to create engagement. It's just a great, a great opportunity. So um, codes in there, it's free. Jump in, join us. So I want to, I want to piggyback on that because <clears throat> we're talking about adding value and deepening relationships. What HomeBot does is it not only creates engagement, but you, it takes a lot of effort to get a client, and once you've earned that trust and respect, deepening that relationship and remaining that connection is essential for your business to grow. And it's a lot easier to get referrals from other clients who become little advocates for you or when you create this community and tribe where there's now already trust established versus some of the clients that I meet with. um, And we talked about this on the TCA a day mastermind call. In fact, I, I put the squeeze on people saying this Tuesday, I better hear one TCA that comes from an annual asset review because sometimes our focus goes after new clients, always, you know, new loans that I can throw into the system. And we forget to nurture the ones that have already shown that they love us and appreciate what we've done for them, which was doing a mortgage. So all these little nuggets that y'all are sharing in HomeBot is to help nurture and deepen a relationship of someone who's already shown they trust you. Yeah, I think that's awesome. I think that's awesome. Hey, I want to real quick um, direct a question to you, Deb. Um, one of the things that Jim said when 
when uh, your sister was speaking, said this is great and seems over the top for a smaller producer starting to grow. Do you have recommendations for the starter level, or would you simply recommend doing the same? So, would you mind addressing that? Because I I know how yeah. I would answer it, but it's probably not nearly as good as how you're going to answer it. Well, I, I'm going to say because of the shift that's coming, and with you know i buyers, it is essential that you create a community and you are local based. So the first thing I would do is make sure you have a Google My Business listing, which anyone who's listening to this, you can email me and I'll give you my cheat sheet on how to do that and how to set it up so that you become very hyper local. Because again, if you're going to try to compete with the Amazons and the Zillows, they can't compete at a hyper local level while giving personal and customized treatment. So first and foremost, I would set that up. Um, also, because you can then start having reviews. And I'll, I'll tell you, for those who already have a Google My, Bis My Business listing, you're going to want to make sure you have at least 100 photos added to that account. I think a lot of times people forget about adding photos and tagging location. That's what's going to make you super local. Um, the next thing I would do is make sure that you, you have a Facebook business page, because I have a lot of clients that will ask, do I need that? You know, should I just keep a personal page? And here's the deal. You need to do both. And it's because the research obsessed client who wants to creep on you and kind of get a, a feeling of how it is to do business with you, they're not going to necessarily friend request you. They want to see a business page, which you can also steer people to give reviews, which is why I also like the Facebook page. And it's also the only way to look at your analytics. So there's ways on the back end that you can see when is your audience most active so that you can be strategic when scheduling posts. So it's when the eyeballs, not the global statistics you see online of when to post, it's, it's true to your audience. Um, so Google My Business Listing, set that up. Business Facebook page, because Facebook and Instagram are still the two most popular um, social platforms. Now, what's tied with Instagram is YouTube. And so I, I'm a big component of YouTube because Google owns YouTube. So again, for SEO and for that local search, um, while also protecting yourself because like my Instagram account for my plug and play got hacked and it took three months. I was fighting with Instagram and I was trying to get that back. I had a lot of followers um, and I couldn't get it back. So remember, you don't own your social platforms. So if you're not taking that data and extrapolating it and putting it in a database somewhere, Ooh, you should. That's a great word. Came from science when I taught. Um, so also YouTube. So I would narrow the focus. I had to spit out my gum because she gave me the evil sister look of like spit your damn gum out because I can hear it. So that's what we were laughing about earlier. Anyways, Google my business, Facebook business page. You can sync an Instagram account to your Facebook business page so that you're minimizing clicks and actions and then dedicate time towards building out that educational um, library on YouTube where you're putting in descriptions so that, again, it's scalable. And the best way I tell clients to do this is to have a little think pad by your desk and any question you're asked, and I don't care if it's a processor, an underwriter, a funder, post-closing, any question you're asked, write it down. And those are different hooks that you can record videos on that then in your email signature, if you have a hyperlink to your video vault, well, then a lot of those questions that you're having to repeat those answers to over and over and over, you can start directing them to your YouTube channel, or you can just send them the link where you know they're going to get the most thorough, high energy, good response where you've recorded your explanation. And it's not when you're like putting out a fire because you've got a closing in an hour. So you, you don't give your most thorough response. And then that creates challenges down the road. Um, it's also good for when you're building out a team. So even though you're just starting out and it may just be you right now, if you're hopeful in five years that you have a level of production like Denise does, how are you going to maintain the integrity of your brand if you don't have those videos in place where it is you on the camera that's consistently giving that value. So, so, so I think you and I could do a full interview on, uh, and maybe we should next week if you're cool with it, on how to get started with social media. And maybe, you know, there's kind of two categories. Your beginner, what's the core setup? Hey, you're doing it and you want to kind of be a mid-tier player or, hey, you want to do the be the local legend like Denise, and we do a whole call on that. Would you be game with that? Absolutely. So stay tuned on some, you know, launch. Take We're going to just call it take your social media to the next level. 
Uh, and for you, it sounds like it's getting started. So two things, and then a question for Denise, or for you, um, Deborah. Shannon just asked for uh, information on how Mortgage Coach is helping um, listings get agents. And Shannon, I just put a link to our playbook. It's called the CMA a day playbook. Uh, and we talk about that every Tuesday at 11. There's also a playlist. So if you go back and listen to those calls, you'll have it. And then, like I said, look in this thread, there's a playbook to get your question answered. So, so we're in the last 10 minutes and you know, Deborah, you're now a regular co-host on these calls today. You're a special guest with your sister, but you, you know, you, you know, things that Todd and I don't know, and you know what this community could get from Denise. So why don't we in these last two minutes, what do you think should be shared from Denise? Cause we don't get her on the stage all the time. What, what should she talk about as we wrap this up? Well, it's funny you say that because a lot of the clients and sometimes they don't even know we're related. Um, when I ask them, you know, who are some social accounts that you like or dislike? They always mention Denise's and they always say, I feel like I know her already. And so I think it's important to, and I'll let you talk about this, about how it's with what we provide, we do a lot of the heavy lifting with consumption and relevant data, um, but it's still a partnership where to create that personal feeling and personal touch, I'm reaching out to her and I'm like, I need a video. I need two videos a week. I need you to make a personal post on this. I want you pointing to the wall and we're going to use this caption. Like you still have to be a part of the process. It's not completely hands-off if you want that personal feeling in that touch, because I don't ever want to see more than three branded posts in a row. And that's because psychologically people will start to think that a marketing company is doing your social media. And if that's the case, they're going to stop engaging because they don't think it's you. So why don't you talk a little bit about how that shift um, and, and getting more intentional of your strategy and, and teaming up how that's helped in your opinion or how you do that because you know even with October coming we have certain things yeah so how do we plan for that I mean I think just like anything you have to put it in your calendar and literally plan for it I I already know that in October it's Halloween I know what post I want to make in Halloween um, I've got the props for it I've Amazoned them they're here I've got a witch hat I've got you, you know I've I I try to stay relevant. It's probably like any singer, like Madonna, or like how do they reinvent themselves, you know, decade after decade after decade? That's to a level of where I feel I'm at with social media. But I think the common thing I hear from people, even when you made the announcement, Dave, is and this isn't to toot my own horn. Anybody that knows me knows that's not how, how I am. But people say, I love her videos. I, I, I like how she, explains. And I think where that comes from is I just, I'm talking to a camera right now. And sometimes when we talk to a camera, our tone changes. And sometimes it sounds a little lecturing. And so sometimes when we're recording our videos with our phone, or we're doing a reel, or we sound different. And it's usually because we just haven't practiced it enough. There, that comfort level isn't there. But that didn't happen overnight for me. You know, our company did a, a video a day challenge for 31 days. I think they said 40 people signed up to, to commit to posting a video a day and only eight people completed the video challenge. And that just tells you that there's so much fear and it's hard and that consistency that the average person is going to quit. It's just the truth. And so if you want to achieve high levels of success, whether it's in your fitness career, like you're going to go to the gym and you're going to eat salads, like you're going to be so disciplined that you're going to commit to doing it. But the eight people who completed the video a day challenge, the video that they did on day one versus the video that they did on the very last day, it's night and day different. And guess what? They did it. They committed every, every day for 31 days. And the first week, I mean, it was hard to watch. It was, it was hard to watch. But they, they, they stuck it out. And if you saw my videos, if you pull up my YouTube channel right now, mortgagenerd.tv, and you look at my oldest videos, it's this one holding a camera. It looks like the Blair Witch Project. 
It's shaky. I have a bruise on my cheek because I had just gotten my wisdom teeth out, but I was so tired of answering the same question. My most watched video is how do it, me explaining a HUD statement. That's my most, I don't know if that's pathetic or something to be proud of, but that's still today my most watched video. So my encouragement to you guys is number one, the only way that you're going to get comfortable doing anything, I don't care if it's a mortgage coach strategy, explaining a strategy to someone using mortgage coach, doing the video paired with your you know, strategy that you're enlisted, the only way you're going to get good at it and comfortable at it and feel natural where people feel related to you is by doing it over and over and over and not being afraid to fumble over your words or not being afraid of how you look. I mean, I did a, I did a reel just the other day. I was so compelled to share. I downloaded my database. I researched anyone that has like a 3.25% or below 30 year fixed rate that's still paying PMI because I was so disgusted. You know, DFW, the home values have appreciated like crazy. None of these people should be paying PMI anymore. They can just call and request early removal. And I wanted to get that out. That doesn't help my pocketbook at all, but the total amount of money that we've saved our clients is over $4,000 a month accumulated. Not one single refinance had to be done because they called and requested early removal. That is what gets me excited. That's what I talk about. And I talk about it in a ball cap or like, and I talk to a camera how I would kind of a client. And sometimes the face expressions are a little over-exaggerated. I think you were telling me I need to get better at flirting with the camera or whatever to be a little bit more human, which is not really easy for me. Um, but no matter what it is, that would be my advice. No matter what it is, I did not get to this place overnight. Neither did Jeremy, neither did Dan Keller you know, none of us did. We all fumbled, but the difference is, is we didn't give up. Yeah, well, and it's no. important with that. She said strategy. So before you just post a video a day, in fact, this reminds me of Dave, your interview with Bill Hart, you can practice. It doesn't mean you have to post it. And it doesn't mean you always should because there's quantity and then there's quality. And so you want to make sure that you're always providing value and not just being noisy because yeah. like I saw some of those challenges and That's I was strategy. like, if I see, and before you just post a oh. video a day, in fact, this reminds that, me that of someone gave your, That's weird. Um, make sure that it's, it is quality. And sometimes it's okay to make it, you know, this is my least favorite chore on the weekend, but there, there's gotta be a strategy. So you don't become too diluted. And yeah. that was my concern when I see these challenges is it's like, that can also repel people and people can get turned off to where now when they see a notification that you're going live, I'm muting it because it's not been enough value for me to entertain it. So yeah, get a strategy. No. Such, such good value, such good advice. Uh, I, I got to look at Keith Collins uh, presentation for the Modern Mortgage Summit and it's, it's awesome. It's a five minute video on how to do video and within the video, he literally plays his very first video. Like, like there's like 10 seconds of this is the first time I've ever done a video. And, you know, the camera, the lighting, the audio. And then there was another one like a year or two later. And then there was today. And it was just like, whoa, you know. Uh, but the takeaway, guys, is get started. And remember, text video. Best way to get started is just say thank you to someone, you know, give a little 15 second to 30 second. Thank you. Uh, use the video to give someone an update where, you know, you're putting your picture, you're putting your connection behind them. And then of course, mortgage coach videos are, are great and easy ways to get started. And then you can get to the point where you're, you're doing scroll stopping edutainment or pure education video. So I want to be respectful. Um, I know you guys got another meeting to get to you guys killed it. Uh, I did want to read a really nice comment from uh, David Cram. He said, this is an unpaid plug for Denise. She rocks. We hated social media with her help direction, social media. And she's talking about Deborah, by the way, Deborah is now an integral part of our business and growing with her plan and your work. You'll, um, you'll find success. So uh, David, um, thank you. Thank you for that really nice plug. Uh, a lot of good comments. Thank you guys for your attention 
and and the two of you guys thanks for making time for the mortgage coach community we appreciate you both hey thank you and if you want my formula so i have a very in-depth formula but i couldn't give it to you today you're gonna have to tune in october 6 but i give the exact formula of how to build out the connection and logical piece to building clients for life but you got to tune into the modern mortgage summit so if you want the deets you got to tune in you guys got a link down below modernmortgagesummit.com. Get some. Have a great day, everybody. Give us a like or a love if you got value from today and share this with your mortgage friends. Have Take care, day. Todd. Later, bro.